Hello, my name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. At the end of this PCC graphics tool tutorial, you will be able to effectively use the graphics tool incorporated in PCC. The PCC graphics tool feature can be used to display measured range data, signal information sample from a data acquisition unit, or the position, x or y coordinates, speed or acceleration of track points, along with the images the moment they were acquired. The displayed values take into account the global measurement preferences and will only display the type of signals that are present in the CINI metadata. This ability to visualize acquired data in a graph while simultaneously viewing the image it was acquired from provide both a quantitative and qualitative view of the recorded event. It's important to note that PCC requires OpenGL version 1.2 or newer be installed on the control computer to use this tool. For this initial portion of the tutorial, I will be simulating a CINI with range data since I don't have a CINI recorded with range data information. However, the information will be displayed almost exactly as I demonstrated here. So, let's assume the range data 1 CINI file has range data information recorded in the CINI's metadata and I want to view it simultaneously with the image it was recorded with. With the CINI open, all I need to do is click on the graphics toolbar button. Notice when I do, the range data information window opens to the right of the image display. Now I can advance the CINI one frame at a time to better compare the range data measurements with the event. Or if I want to, I can play the CINI. As you can see, the range data reflects the measurements for the image being displayed in the play panel. For more details on how range data is recorded into the metadata of a CINI file, review the Recording Range Data and Data Acquisition Signaling to a CINI tutorial. OK, let's move on to the DAC, or Data Acquisition Unit Signaling Data. I'm just going to take a few moments to explain the CINI so you can interpret the graph a little bit better as I talk about it. So what I have here is an accelerometer measuring the gravitational force on three axes of the Newton cradle ball it's attached to. The accelerometer is rated for an acceleration of plus or minus 16 G's and outputs a range of 0 to 3.3 volts with the midpoint 1.65 volts being zero acceleration. The measurements, or voltage changes, are being sampled and stored into the buffer of a National Instruments Data Acquisition Unit at 1 mega samples per second. These samples are then sent to the control computer upon request of the computer running PCC via a USB connection from the Data Acquisition Unit to the computer once the camera is triggered. For this CINI, recorded at 2500 frames per second, PCC was configured to retrieve 10 samples per image for each access from the data acquisition unit's memory buffer. With that being said, let's move on to the graph and the information it provides. As you can see here, there are three line or channel graphs on the chart. The blue line, ACH0, analog channel 0, displays the sample measurements of the z-axis or left to right g-force acceleration. The yellow line, ACH1, displays the y-axis, up and down g-force acceleration, and the magenta line, ACH2, displays the samples of the x-axis, backward and forward g-force acceleration. This pull-down selection list allows us to select which channel to display or not to display. For now, I'm going to disable analog channels 1 and 2. The numbers on the left of the chart are the voltages and the numbers along the bottom are the image numbers the samples are associated with. The graphics tool provides a variety of ways to adjust its resolution to get a closer look at the individual sample points with respect to the CINI frame numbers. 
Window Zoom adjusts the graph's horizontal and vertical resolutions on a user-specified region. I simply need to draw a rectangle over the region to zoom and repeat until the desired or maximum zoom is achieved. Horizontal Zoom adjusts the graph's horizontal resolution or width on a user-specified region by selecting a region left to right or right to left until the desired or maximum zoom is achieved. Vertical Zoom adjusts the graph's vertical resolution or height on a user-specified region by selecting a region, top to bottom or bottom to top, until the desired or maximum zoom is achieved. The zoom in and zoom out around point options adjust the graph's horizontal and vertical resolution on a user specified point. All I need to do is place the cursor over the desired zoom point and select it until the desired or maximum zoom is achieved. The pan option is used to readjust or move the display window based on the zoom method used. The display can be moved in either direction, horizontal and or vertical. When the window zoom, zoom in around point, or zoom out around point methods are selected, or if a combination of zoom methods is applied. However, the display will only move in the horizontal direction when the horizontal zoom is used, and in the vertical direction only when the vertical zoom is applied. I want to show you the software displays two vertical lines in the chart, so I need to zoom in a little bit more. The green line represents the T0 or trigger frame, and the white line represents the current image position being displayed in the play panel. Notice as I advance and rewind the cine one frame at a time, the white line moves along with the image accordingly. Now I'm going to zoom in enough to see the individual samples. If you look carefully, you can see there are 10 samples associated with each frame. By selecting the Show Values option and placing the cursor over any of the samples, the software displays a window indicating the image the sample was associated with, the sample number, the channel the sample belongs to, and the measurement value of that sample. To interpret this information, I need to know the accelerometer specifications and the baseline voltage of the analog channel. In this example, I know a change of plus or minus 5 one hundredths or 0 0.05 volts from its baseline voltage of 1.68 volts is equivalent to plus or minus 1 G. So as you can see at this point there is effectively no change in the gravitational force of the accelerometer. However, if I look at one of the samples in image 839 It tells me there has been a change of 5 one hundredths, or 0 0.05 volts, or a change equal to 1 G. To resize the chart so all image samples are displayed, the Fit command must be selected. And the tool allows me to jump to any point in the cine by selecting it in the graph. It also allows me to save this information into a comma-separated text-limited file for all the channels or just the visible channels by selecting the option from the Save pull-down selection list. Once selected, I need to navigate to the folder I wish to write the file to. For this example, I'll create it in the C colon Program Files Phantom Cine Tutorial Cines folder. I also need to assign a name to the file, so I'll call this file Analog Signals and click the Save button. To learn how to view the report files, see the Cine Analysis Part 9 Viewing Report Files tutorial. The last piece of the puzzle is using the graph tool to display binary channel information sampled by a data acquisition unit. So I'll close the ACC 2500 FPS Cine and open the SAM4110V LED 1 Cine. 
just as I did to view the analog channel samples in a chart. I'll click the Graphics Tool Toolbar button to view the binary channel signal samples. If there were more than one channel, I could select the channels to display. I can zoom in to get a better look at the voltage changes. Notice as I advance the Cine 1 frame, the voltage falls 5 volts and the LED goes inactive. And just like before, I can view the value of each sample by selecting Show Values and placing the cursor over the sample. And if I wanted to, I could even save the sample values to a comma-separated text-limited file. Before I finish up, I want you to know that the Graphics tool can even display a combination of range data, analog, and binary signals simultaneously. For details on how to use this tool to view XY coordinates, speed, or acceleration measurements of tracked points, review the Cine Analysis Part 7 Auto Tracking of Collect Points or Cine Analysis Part 8 Manual Tracking of Collect Points tutorials. So that concludes the PCC Graphics Tool tutorial where you learned how to view range data, analog or binary signal channel measurement samples, along with the various functions and capabilities associated with this tool. For in-depth Phantom Operations, Vision Research offers Phantom Operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com Service Support Training or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for Phantom Cameras in general.